In this video, we are going to talk about game objects. Now, game objects is one of those things where you could talk about it for, you know, five to six seconds if you wanted to, or you could probably talk about it for hours and hours and hours if you really, really were so inclined. Because a game object is really going to be pretty much everything that is in your scene. As a matter of fact, if I just, I mean, before I even write, write anything down at all, if I just jump over into Unity and we take a look over here inside the hierarchy view, everything you see over here is a game object. Of course, that begs the question, though, what is a game object? Lee, in, it, in your words, what is a game object? Everything. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's a container th that depicts something inside of a scene. Mm -hmm. inside of a unity w or the world inside of unity it's the base the baseline i don't want to say component because those are a little bit different right you got to kind of watch the words you use right. but it, it is a the base aspect right it acts as a container but it is the foundation of everything that you will be building inside of you well I'll, I'll go a different route if anybody is coming to these videos from a maya background this is really easy. A game object is just a transform node. That's all it is. It's a positional, uh, it's a point in space that you can do things with. Now, what kind of things can you do with a game object? Well, so, because it is a transform node. Let, well, let me get rid of the word container for now. Uh -huh. uh, we'll keep it simple. What, what can you do with a game object? I mean, just saying what it is, you could, I mean, it's so easy to say, well, it's everything in your scene, but that sounds so kind of out there and cloud-like. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's vague. It's, it's hard to really put your finger on. So a game object is an object that can be moved, rotated, and scaled. So there's your three transforms. It can be named. It can have a hierarchy of par well, parented objects. It can be parented to something, and it can have objects parented to it. So I'm just going to narrow that all down to hierarchy if my pen will come back there we go and my pen just went crazy again hello pen there we go so it can be a uh, part of a hierarchy you can also think about them because of the the hierarchical nature you can think about them as pivot points if you want to and i'll actually show you how to apply that but there's something else they can do and it's probably and i gotta say probably maybe arguably the most important aspect of a game object is that they can be defined via components and components are something that we will talk about in an entirely separate video but the two are very closely related uh, so when you're using one in many many cases you'll generally be using the other but that's not always going to be true so let's jump over into unity and let's take a closer look at game objects. As I mentioned a second ago, everything that exists over here in the hierarchy panel is, in fact, a game object. It's just they're all doing different things. Now, let's just keep it really, really basic. I'm going to create a brand new game object, an empty one right here somewhere near my campfire. As a matter of fact, let me grab my tent and I'll hit F just to frame up the view because that uh, makes things nice and clean. Now. I'm going to go under the game object menu. It's so important it has its own menu. I mean, that tells you right there that this is pretty critical, right? We can go under create empty. So we can make an empty game object. We can also create other. Now, I'm just going to point these out. I'm not actually going to make anything right this second, but we have things like particle systems. We have cameras. We have point lights, spotlights, uh, cubes, cylinders, trees, all kinds of things we can make. And they are all essentially the same thing as an empty game object. So let's just make an empty game object and we'll start there. And here it is. Are you not amazed? Now it's not the gizmo, the little move tool there. Really, we can change that to anything we want. We can show the rotate gizmo, the scale gizmo, or we can hide it all together and we still are looking at our game object, but currently our game object has nothing in it. And so there's really nothing to see. Now if we take a look at the game object itself, over here inside the inspector, it has a name. So we can rename this. We can call this my ultra cool game object. So you can see, boom, the name changes over here in the hierarchy view. It has the ability to be named. We have the ability to <coughs> enable and disable it with the checkbox to the left of our name. We do. And if it's disabled, then it will just not be calculated. Uh, we can apply tags and layers to this game object. Now, tags and layers are two different concepts that we will not be approaching in this video. They're a little bit outside the scope, uh, but they are organizational and 
well, even beyond organizational, layers allow you to do all kinds of things with lighting and physics and, uh, and ways to control what's going on in your scene by kind of applying various labels to groups of objects. We'll right. get into that a little later. There's also a checkbox called static. Now this works with a lot of other functionality inside of Unity we're really not gonna cover right now, but in basic essence of it is to control whether or not this object is going to be dynamic and moving around the scene or if it's gonna be stationary in the scene. And that's what th that um, checkbox does. Important for light mapping. Yes. And we'll talk about that later as well. Now, the other critical aspect of a game object is going to be our transform component. Now, this is always going to be there. Every single game object has one of these. And this is why you are able to reposition the game object. You'll see as I move it around, the transform, the, I'm sorry, the position is updating. I can rotate it and I can scale it and all of those numbers will update. Now, all of these various things that I'm doing, uh, such as handling transformations, uh, we'll talk a little bit about parenting here in just a moment. All of these, we're going to discuss in much greater detail inside of a video uh, series or video set within uh, the Unity Fundamental Series called Working with Game Objects. And in that, we discuss a lot of specific things and how to go about moving, rotating, scaling, snapping, parenting, uh, duplicating the list just really really goes on and on right but what we wanted to show is everything that you see in the inspector is inherent to the functionality of a game object every game object has the same sets of parameters that's right now again everything that you see over here in the hierarchy panel is a game object so let's create something let's say we want to make we're going to create and I'm gonna make a cube so I make a cube and I can move this cube we can move it we can rotate it we can scale it if we so desire. But take a look at what you see over here in the inspector. We have the name, we've got the tag, we've got the layer, and we have the transform component. This is exactly the same as an empty game object. As a matter of fact, if we grab my cool game object, take a look at what happens really closely. Just a few components disappear. These two objects are the same. The only difference is our little block here has a few more components that define it as being some sort of 3D object in space. And again, we'll talk about components here in a minute. The reason I actually did this was because over here in Photoshop, I mentioned that you could think of a game object, if you wish, as a pivot point. And here's how that kind of works. And this ties into the fact that game objects can be parented into hierarchies. So if I go back over here to Unity, we can grab our little cube that we've created here and drop this onto my ultra cool game object. Now I can move the cube whenever I want to uh, from its local pivot, just like we saw a moment ago, but I can also select my ultra cool game object and I can translate relative to that as well. So I can rotate, I can move, and you'll see it is like an entirely separate pivot point. If we take a look in the hierarchy view, we see my ultra cool game object now has a triangle next to it, which we can extend, and underneath that we see cube. So we're able to parent objects together into complicated hierarchies, if we so desire, to control how they're being animated, or just as an organizational thing. You don't even have to think of a game object as a pivot point if you don't want to. Uh, for, for instance, here inside the view, you'll see we have a camp game object, and underneath that, if I zoom up on, on everything we have here, Underneath the camp game object, we have a bench, a couple of benches actually. We've got a fire pit, which has its own little hierarchy of things underneath it. And all of these are game objects. But really, this camp game object is here for no other reason than organization. It's just to keep things a little easier to read so that I don't have a hierarchy view that's scattered around with benches and fire pits and tents. I can collapse it down to a single camp and I can see things underneath that. The bonus to this though is just like as before, if I want to take this camp and relocate it, I can move the whole thing in one go just by selecting that primary game object to which everything has been parented. Now, again, the final thing that, and uh, arguably the most important thing, is that game objects, again, are defined through components. And components are something that I'll talk about in a separate video. But just as a, a real quick case in point, you can take any game object and you can assign various components to it and literally define its further functionality. 
by itself a game a game object can only do these things we've discussed so far it can have a name it can have a tag it can have a layer it can have uh, some transforms to it it can be parented and that's it if you want a game object to be able to do anything else you're going to put components on it but that's as far as i'm going to take that lee is there anything else you want to throw in no that's it all right so that will wrap things up for this video and in the next video we'll take a look at components thanks for watching